to uh, Bay Floor Leadership uh, with myself and Dr. Eddie Sherman. Uh, we're certainly uh, appreciative of Lexapol hosting this opportunity. And really, this is an offshoot from the Company Officers Dilemma webinar series. Uh, we were thrilled and, and uh, quite frankly, overwhelmed with the amount of question and, and questions and interest uh, that many of you shared with us and your challenges of being a company officer and even some chief officers. Uh, and certainly for those who want to be officers in the future, we hope to be able to offer you a lot of good stuff, uh, just kind of tidbits and, 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 and tips and ideas, nuggets uh, that you can use as you uh, move along in your career. And again, welcome uh, to my compadre, Ed. Uh, some of you may or may not know, but Ed and I have been friends for, uh, well, over 50 years. Uh, and uh, we were firefighters together in Long Island, and then he took a law enforcement path. And then I uh, um, continued on the fire path, and uh, we've always stayed friends. And uh, now we have a cool opportunity to be delivering some stuff together. Ed's passion is leadership. Eddie, welcome. Thank you, Billy. Pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, so let's go to our first question. Again, these are going to be down and dirty, quick and easy uh, questions that uh, we hope to provide answers to you for. So I'll generally provide my perspective from a, from a working chief standpoint, if you will. Uh, and then Ed will provide uh, more of a, uh, Ed, Ed is a psychologist, but his studies have been in leadership. So he'll give you probably a deeper look and, and, and perhaps a more professional view. And I, I, I have no problem using that term to describe him and a little bit less on my end, uh, because I tend to shoot from the hip and give you my advice. Uh, Ed will give you his advice, but also based upon a lot of research and stuff too. So I think together we provide uh, something that, that I, I know based upon your feedback is very helpful. And that's what we're here for, to help. So here's the first question. Is it ever okay for the company officer to request a difficult employee be transferred away from the crew? And, I, and I'll kick this off and then we'll get into it with uh, Dr. Ed. So yeah, sure, if you wanna pass a problem along to somebody else uh, or you're incapable of dealing with it, then that's fine. Uh, you know, it's so much, that's the path of least resistance, is this employee is no good, let's just get rid of them, let's move them somewhere else. And a, a very close friend of mine had a situation like that with an employee who probably should never have graduated the academy, but that's out of our control. So this firefighter had been transferred from station to station to station, and it finally got to my friend and he kind of locked in on it. And uh, it was challenging, believe me, it was challenging. But that's what you're there for. Either you're into the job or you're not, either you're engaged or you're not. And sure, it would be easy if every time you went to the firehouse, you had no issues, no problems, no challenges. But until you've gotten to a point where if, if it gets contentious, and again, maybe Eddie can lean into that end of it, but you as an officer have a responsibility. And, and when you get a new employee, or when you start as a new officer, set your tone, set your set your boundaries, set what your goals and objectives are. Naturally, they have to meet the organization's goals and objectives. But what are what is that employee being measured against? Do you have a a performance evaluation program, or do you do something in house? Again, whatever you do, make sure it's fair. Make sure that everybody had to participate in this at one time, and go through a checklist. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing this? And if they're not, you continue working on that. Also, and I'm going to yield to you right now, Eddie, also never, ever, ever hesitate to reach out to the experts in that area. Reach out to human resources, reach out to your battalion chief, reach out to your superior. You are not qualified to deal with intense personnel issues. As a company officer, you're there to identify the problem. If you can fix it, working with the employee, great. If not, seek out expertise. Eddie, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely, Billy. I agree completely. And, and you know, the phrase you used, uh, path of least resistance, it's true that humans really are like electricity in that sense, that they seek out the path of least resistance. And clearly, the easier answer here is to shuffle the person around from one assignment to another. But that's definitely not the best answer, because the problem is the issues, concerns, and, and causes for wanting to transfer that person have not been addressed and have not been resolved in many instances. And although you, the individual who's supervising that person, perhaps don't have to deal with that person at that moment, somebody else does. And then the question is, do they address it? 
So a much better way to deal with it is to actually try to bring to bear some solutions. And the first way to do that is to try to find out what's going on with this person, meet with them in private, solicit their ideas, their concerns, what would make this better, try to problem solve, and if necessary, of course, uh, hold them accountable and, and use discipline if needed and appropriate, but it is never going to solve the problem by just simply moving them from point A to point B. And it would even really be tragic if you found out that the person was transferred from your command or supervision to someone else's and then some problem or serious issue happened. Now, that's not to say that if the person is a safety risk or there's other situations where it's a toxic work environment that they might not be need to be administratively reassigned, but that's a little bit different situation. I think what we're talking about here is really more the day-to-day challenging staff member and we know one of the hardest things for anybody who supervises or manages people is those challenging staff members but i believe it is not a bad thing it is a great thing for both your career and for the firefighter because this is an opportunity for both of you to improve a situation and make it better back to you billy yeah, taking that employee and moving them should be your last uh, res resort, and it should not be your ultimate decision. It should be the decision that's made collaboratively uh, with perhaps uh, your battalion chief, your supervisor, HR, uh, whatever. But uh, again, identify what the issue is by talking to them. If you're uncomfortable talking to the employee one-on-one, -on -one, you can ask someone else to join you, uh, again, based upon your department procedures. If it's got contentious uh, if it's got where you feel like at any moment somebody could explode, you don't want to be in that situation. And give the employee the opportunity to have somebody join in the conversation as well. Uh, and, and also understand the degrees of the problem. If this is a chronic late problem, that's fixable. Either you're going to be on time to work, you're not going to work here, right? I mean, enough is enough. But maybe, and, and oftentimes, we're dealing with things that are much more in, in depth at home issues, uh, personal issues. And again, be very careful. You are not a counselor. You are not a psychologist. So understand, if it is a personal issue, uh, then you need to uh, um, to direct that employee or to bring in help. You certainly hold their hand, uh, figuratively speaking, uh, to get them to the help they need. Uh, but the bottom line is you're the lieutenant, you're the captain, you need to be fixing this uh, and not passing it on to somebody else if you're gonna be an effective officer. Final, final thoughts, Eddie? So the important challenge here is balance. To bring about balance, how do you support your staff but also hold them accountable. And those two things do not work in opposition. Those two things should work in parallel and be complementary processes. So you can do both, but I agree and wanna reinforce the point, it's really important to know what your skill level is and when you need to reach out to other people because it's not reasonable to think that you're gonna be the subject matter expert and be able to solve everything, but it is reasonable to try to do what you can to make it better. You know, to the fire chiefs and commissioners out there listening to this, this is a, an excellent uh, point as far as what is your organization doing to invest in your officers to give them the tools and the training to deal with these kind of situations. I see in most cases officers are great at stretching a line and, and, and directing, you know, a hose line or a ventilation task, but uh, we tend to get ourselves jammed up when we're dealing with the people stuff. Uh, so strike that second alarm. Uh, if you need additional resources, don't hesitate to do that. Well, hey, thanks for checking in with us at Bay Floor Leadership. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can write to us at webinars at lexapole.com uh, and just put in there Bay Floor Leadership. Uh, we're going to give you our opinion. I'm going to give you my opinion from a tactical and, and, and uh, uh, fire chiefing standpoint. And Ed's going to give you his opinion as a veteran fire officer but also as a psychologist who studies leadership. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.